Hey, this is Nerion, and welcome back to another episode of Citizen Bytes, your trusty co-pilot in the vast verse of Star Citizen updates. Today, we're tackling the Alpha 3.23.1a release, so buckle up, because summarizing this might be harder than landing a Drake Caterpillar in a tight spot. So let's get into it. So in this build, which has just landed on the live environment. Characters are now built from long-term persistence, LTP data. So be prepared to lose some items like med pens, ammo, rentals, and refinery jobs. You'll start with a fresh 20,000 AUEC with features like the replication layer and server crash recovery enabled, things are looking stable, at least in theory. New features and gameplay tweaks. Well, missiles have received a makeover with increased lock ranges, reduced speeds, and balanced fuel tank amounts. Perfect for when you need to strike fear into the hearts of your enemies, or just your friends in dogfights. Salvage missions are now a bit less rewarding. I guess the treasure hunting just got a little tougher, folks. And the Hornet series received tuning updates, fixing lateral strafe and adjusting boost fuel usage. The Sabre Firebird, which I did cover in one of my previous episodes, now carries the 24 missile loadout instead of the 12 and has reduced emissions. The Retaliator's turrets now boast size 3 guns. Now that's a lot of firepower to play with. Performance optimizations have been made for both client and network. Vehicle damage has been fine-tuned, and a full pass on ship weapon audio mixing means your battles will sound as epic as they look. Now, when it comes to bug fixes and technical updates, this patch does squash a variety of bugs. Issues causing disconnects, non-responsive elevators at Pyro Jump Point Station, and carryable objects falling through floors have been fixed. AI should now react properly to non-hostile players and ship shield VFX should display correctly. Various problems with exit prompts, mission crime stats, oxygen depletion, targeting modes, and interaction points have been addressed as well. Additionally, missing paints, thrusters, and other interaction elements have been corrected. Uh, the team also fixed six client crashes, five server crashes, and a main thread deadlock. Also an out of memory client crash as well. That's a lot of crash test dummies sacrificed in the name of progress. Progress worthwhile. Uh, other known issues, um, the server crash recovery will mark all current missions as abandoned without affecting reputation, uh, which might cause trespassing issues. Options for repair, refuel, and restock are unavailable throughout the PU. Uh, characters might also face inventory access issues, and docking arms might fail to extend when needed. Prone players, beware. Clasher laser mines can still detonate, and AI may remain immobile post-spawn in derelict settlements. The turrets at Grim Hex will still target players with crime stat, other quirks include invisible magazine reloads, inaccessible items, and missing purchase cards in shops. And that's the Star Citizen live update in a nutshell. Overall, I'm pretty excited about the improved weapons audio. It's definitely going to make those dogfights even more immersive. And whilst I am a little bit skeptical about the stability, we'll just have to see how it holds up when I get some time to dive into the verse. And hey, I always appreciate a good batch of bug fixes. It's nice to know that oxygen depletion in Clash's work mines won't have me gasping for air quite so dramatically anymore. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Sir Citizen. And Citizen Bites, do not forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more updates. And until the next time, remember, fly safe. And if your ship explodes, at least it'll be spectacular. I have once again been an unprofessional gamer, and that's a wrap.